we can make 50,000 distributing. So they can't resist. I want to control it as a business. To keep it respectable. I don't want it near schools. I don't want it sold to children. That's an infamia. In my city, we would keep the traffic in the dark, people, to call it. They're animals anyway, so let them lose their souls. Heroin addicts are no longer people in alleys in New York City. These are our children. These are children. But first, a News 12 special report that will change everything you think you know about heroin in the Hudson Valley and the people getting hooked. Good evening, everyone. I'm Janine Rose. And I'm Scott McGee. The use of heroin is reaching epidemic proportions here in the Hudson Valley. It is a drug that used to be associated with only hardcore addicts and street junkies. But now, middle-class kids and young adults are using it to get high right in their own neighborhoods. And many of them are dying as a result. News 12 Tara Rosenblum begins her exclusive series tonight, Hooked on Heroin, with a look at how this drug is destroying local families. Tara. Scott, Janine, the children of the grieving parents you're about to meet come from a tight-knit town and good families like yours who did everything right. This wasn't supposed to happen, but it did. And now those parents are speaking out for the first time in the hopes you will watch this. Stop what you're doing and speak to your own children. <laughs> An hour and a half north of New York City sits Port Jervis, a picturesque town in rural Orange County, advertised as a great place to raise your family. But as we all know by now, things are not always what they seem. My son passed right here in this house. I found him. Renee Huston still can't bring herself to walk inside the bedroom right across from her own. It's the place where she found her only child dead three months ago with a needle sticking out of his arm. I have to live with that image every day of finding him that morning. And I try very hard to replace it with one of him smiling. Those two pictures right there I love because to me they say he's on top of the world and he was he just didn't see it lying in bed covered up with blankets sweating but freezing tossing and turning waiting for the call then finally i get the call saying everything is good so i jump up feeling so achy but i must get up and go make the sickness go away Every day for me is a bad day. It's just when I wake up, how I choose to deal with it. Losing her only child when he was just 23 thrust Renee Hustons into an exclusive club no one wants to be a part of. I don't think there's anything more devastating than losing a child. It's a club we didn't know even existed until we showed up in this kitchen ready to talk to one grieving parent and found five instead. My name is Peter. I lost my son Ryan on October 11th. 2013. My name is Kim and I lost my son James JJ on uh, no November 9th, 2012 from a heroin overdose. My name is Jackie Vidal. I lost my son Ricky three years ago to a heroin overdose. He was 18 years old. Quick, get in the car, give them the money, get the stuff. Once strangers, they now lean on each other like old friends. Ben and I were having a heated argument or and I drove by the cemetery. I'm like, would you like me to pick you a lot? From the conversations that still haunt them. I asked my kids, I said, listen, I said, Ryan, what do you want in your obituary? Oh. To the haunting sense, perhaps they could have done more. I should have had him arrested when he stole stuff. You know what? 
I did. You had him arrested? Yes, I did. You're a brave woman. <laughs> I couldn't do it. And let me tell you what. I thought that was going to be the hardest thing I'd ever have to do in my life. No. <laughs> right. I didn't ever think I was going to bury him. Right. Their stories are strikingly similar and will leave you asking, how did heroin take hold? I opened the bags, cutting them with a razor, pouring the power into a spoon. None of their children fit the profile of an addict. Ryan was a very sociable kid, very intelligent. Big brown eyes and a beautiful smile. His smile would grace right over you. He was beautiful. JJ was full of fun. He had so many friends. He was social. He loved music. He loved to cook. He loved, he just loved living. You know, he just didn't seem like he was a drug addict, you know, except when he stole things. Theft. The dead giveaway of addiction. They all missed it at first. Like they say, missing things out of the house. Mm hmm That was Ricky. He had a car full of his, it were his friends came to my house one day when I wasn't home. Loaded every TV I owned. Every, I have four daughters. All their jewelry, my jewelry. Everything disappeared. And this was my own, my own son. That you would never, ever, ever, because his family met everything to him, would do something like this. You know, this is a drug that's evil. I drop in the cotton and suck it into the syringe, then poke it into my skin, then the vein, I can feel a slight pop. Habits that grew as most heroin addictions do these days, on a prescription pad. My son's best dealer was his psychiatrist. But when pills became too pricey, their kids all turned to heroin for a cheaper high. In Port Jervis, a deck of heroin cost just $10. I push the plunger down and wait a millisecond, then the sweet release. And we're told it's easier to buy than a pack of cigarettes. It's so widespread. I mean, probably I could get some. We had delivery boys come into our house. It's that easy. And today, the heroin is more dangerous than ever. Dealers have made it so potent, students are getting hooked after one high. This amazing warmth starting in my chest, then spreading to the rest of my body, and the sickness is gone, and the bliss starts. Even 20 rehab visits in four years couldn't help Peter's son, Ryan, shake the habit. When they're in rehab, it's probably the same as if they're in jail. There's a relief because in your mind you say, they're safe tonight. You're always dreading that phone call. Um, unfortunately, uh, 12 hours before he was to go back into rehab, I got the phone call at 3 in the morning from a police officer in Florida that he was shot. Over a $20 bag. Ryan became the sixth heroin addict to die in just two years in this tiny town of 9,000. But unlike the recent death of Philip Seymour Hoffman, none of these deaths made the network news. How come none of these people are found, these dealers? I just don't understand it. I don't. The Hoffman dealers were found like what, a day and a half. He's famous, but he's no more important than my boy, you know? My kid had a future. He really did. I feel like I could conquer the world, do anything. If they paid more attention to my sons three years ago, Maybe half of them would be alive today. I clean up, put everything away, and just lay back and enjoy. It's all gone, and the poison takes over again. Unless the poison kills you. But these parents are speaking out, hoping the club they so unwillingly entered. He wanted a good night's sleep. Oh, he got his good night's sleep. Will be closed to new members. Every day is a day that there's times when I still cry. Hopefully other people feel the pain that I've felt and my friends here have felt. I will do whatever I can with all my power to make a difference. I want every parent in this country to know they have to, they have to know how widespread this is. It's not like when we were in school. It's not, these are not, heroin addicts are no longer people in alleys in New York City. These are our children. These are children that are brought up in good families that they're doing heroin. It's such an epidemic that 
you want the word to go out. You don't want another family ever suffering for not being able to hold their baby. And we thank all those parents for having the courage to come forward. Renee, Peter, Kim, Jack, it happened to their children, and it could happen to yours. In fact, since we first met up to hear their stories last month, yet another young high school graduate from Port Jervis suffered a fatal heroin overdose. If you think your child might be battling addiction, we've got a long list of resources to help you on our website at news12.com. Just click on the numbers and links section. Westchester County has now been run over by opiate-based painkillers and heroin in one of the richest counties in America. News 12 is given unprecedented access to a recovery center on the front lines of Westchester's war against heroin. Well, heroin is now a drug of choice for addicts nationwide. Here at home, people are dying in alarming numbers. Heroin deaths locally have nearly doubled in just the past four years. And every day, addicts across our area are turning to recovery centers as a last hope in beating demons that they cannot tackle on their own. Addicts as young as 13. Tonight, News 12's Tara Rosenblum puts a face on the widespread problem in her special report, Hooked on Heroin. Suzanne, the young man you're about to meet is bright, well-educated, and from a good family. But heroin drove him to do things he never dreamed possible, and it nearly killed him. The Guidance Center of Westchester saved his life. You think of Westchester, you think of big houses and rich kids, and, and it's here just as much as it is in the Bronx or anywhere else in the city. By like eighth grade, I was, I was a, basically a full-blown addict. Westchester County might be one of the richest counties in America. Unless it opens its eyes, it's going to have one of the largest problems in America. I've got 249 patients that come in for treatment almost daily. Medication in itself will not solve your problem. As program director of the county's only freestanding methadone clinic, Donald Johnson is on the front lines of Westchester's war against heroin. At some point, your addiction takes over. You could be standing at talking to one of my patients at Target. You could be at a pharmacy being treated by one of my patients. You could be at a hospital, and one of my patients would walk in and be the nurse's aide. I probably started trying it when I was 10. You were just 10 years old? Yeah. Go, 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 go. At a time when most little boys are focused on baseball and video games, Brian Barry was worried about his next high. First it was marijuana and alcohol, but by the time he was old enough to drive. I started messing with the heavier stuff probably when I was 15. Prescription pills, like Oxycontin, Xanax. And if you had asked Brian back then, graduating to anything stronger was simply out of the question. I was scared of needles. If you tried to take my blood, I would faint. But it wasn't long before fear lost. By the time I was 17, I was full-blown heroin addict. Raised in a middle-class family he describes as loving and tight-knit. Everyone worked. Everyone pulled their part. The former baseball player and a student explained to us how heroin became his drug of choice. I was 16. I was staying at a friend's house. There was two of my friends there. They were probably a couple years older than me and there was a line on the table. I thought it was cocaine. So I did it and I tasted it. I'm like, I was like, what the hell is that? And they told me and I got mad and they're like, just, if you're still mad in five minutes, we'll talk. And I wasn't mad. I was, that was, there was no going back after that. Just one hit, that's all it took, and soon Brian was shooting up for a more intense high. It's kind of like, I want to say like an ecstasy feeling. It's like a euphoria, it's like a rush. Brian eventually got kicked out of Blessed Sacrament High School in New Rochelle and started life as a full-time junkie. Feels like, you're trapped. I guess it's like you're being controlled. And Brian was amazed at what he was willing to do to feed his addiction. Robberies, burglaries, stick-ups, robbing drug dealers. Risky behavior that almost proved deadly 
several times. I've been shot at, I've had knives pulled out on me, things like that, I've been jumped. But even with the threat of death, Brian could not escape the tight grip of addiction. I've overdosed. It didn't stop me. Get out of the hospital and do it all over again. So, just slows you down for that day. It won't, doesn't stop you. Even come close. Neither did a six foot cell. When I was 16, I got arrested for a burglary. When I was 17, I got arrested for three more. They offered me like seven years. Like my heart basically just fell. He wound up serving six months, all the while still using behind bars. So what ultimately scared Brian straight? After being released to a halfway house, he failed a drug test and faced hard time. So instead of looking for his next fix. I wake up every morning, I come here. Brian finally got a glimpse. Thank you. Of the big picture. You don't hear about a successful heroin user. You don't see a 70 year old heroin user. It's because they're all dead or in jail. Westchester County has now been run over by opiate-based painkillers and heroin in one of the richest counties in America. You have money to buy it, the drug dealers got the way to supply it, and now you've got a problem. A problem Donald Johnson says can be directly traced to the overprescription of painkillers like oxycodone. This last four or five months has been really frightening because prescription pain medication abuse has taken off to a level we've not seen, and when they can't get prescription pain medicine, they usually reach out to and secure the next cheapest thing, which is heroin. And heroin at a $5 bag is a cheaper high than a prescription pain medicine, but it's much more deadly. And Johnson says even more disturbing are the faces of the newest victims. The number of deaths in Westchester County has significantly grown uh, in the younger population. How to quantify that? In 2010 through 2012, we could probably say we saw between six and 10 deaths in the county. We've probably seen that many deaths in the last nine months. Young folk are not going home today telling their mothers and fathers, I'm addicted to an opiate-based substance. And by the time you discover your child's addicted, it's a little bit too late. But a lucky few arrived just in time here at the guidance center in New Rochelle. Have a good day. Before it's too late. If you don't educate the county about the problem, the problem will continue to be what it is. It'll get bigger and fast. The thought is always there. As for Brian, every day he still fights the demons that destroyed his childhood. I will be an addict the rest of my life. No doubt about that. But will I use? Hopefully not. While Brian tries to put the heroin nightmare behind him, the guidance center teaches him a person can be much more than their past mistakes. I've given the drug so much already. Like, I'm not giving it anything else. I'm not going to throw away everything that I've worked so hard for, for a 10 minute high. And certainly it's not easy to come forward and admit you have a problem in such a public fashion. So we want to thank Brian for his courage and the Guidance Center of Westchester for allowing us inside their world. And parents, here are some telltale signs of heroin addiction, a loss of appetite, rapid weight loss, and things start disappearing from your home. We've got a long list of resources on our website, news12.com, that can help you or a loved one find help. Tara Rosenblum. News 12. It is a powerful report. Tara, thank you for that. Well, police are on the front lines fighting the war on heroin, trying to put the dealers behind bars. We're heading over to a uh, known drug location. News 12 goes undercover with the Peekskill Police Department. Tomorrow, we'll tell you the shocking places that heroin is being bought and sold right here in the Hudson Valley. So stay with us here at News 12 and News12.com for continuing coverage of our special series, Hooked on Heroin and the Deadly Effects of This Epidemic. 
Welcome back, everyone. Tonight, the conclusion of our special report, Hooked on Heroin. Yeah, you've seen how the drug is taking more young lives and destroying more families than ever before. But what you have not seen is the people working on the front lines every day, trying to take dealers off our streets and put them behind bars. News trials Tara Rosenblum rode along with a veteran peak skilled drug enforcement officer to get a first-hand look at the problem. Tara. Scott, we spent two days undercover with a police officer on the front lines of Westchester's war against heroin. And as a new mother myself, what I saw left me terrified. Addicts are scoring heroin near shopping markets, elementary schools, and inside one place that will shock you. But police are fighting back. What do we need to know as we head out today? Keep your head down. Right off the bat, we learned this is no regular ride along with veteran peak skill officer Matt Basso. He told us to keep our heads down or they might get blown off. There's a huge heroin epidemic in peak skill. And with that, drug profits that need to be defended. There's some times where, you know, you'll, you'll leave the police station, you'll go on a patrol and every car you pull over, you'll make, a, you'll make a drug arrest. This drug used to be considered taboo. It was something that was kind of left in the alleyways or in the slums, and now it's, you know, it's in, it's in your neighborhoods, it's in your backyards. It's, it's touched, you know, your family, someone you've known, friend, someone you grew up with. Officer Basso told us the city is awash in cheap yet potent heroin, and the proof came quickly. We're gonna drive around, we're gonna uh, center a couple of the dope houses, and we're gonna see if we can get someone coming in to purchase heroin. We're heading over to a uh, known drug location. Our ride along continues. This drug knows no race, no ethnicity, no age, no, no uh, social class. It's pretty universal. I can tell when someone's on heroin. Addiction is something Officer Basso has learned to spot right away. They look like walking, walking zombies. They just wither away. They're, it's just disgusting. It's just, the disease just eats them. The addiction just eats them. That's, that's the only thing that they live for. You know, they forget about their families, they forget about their jobs, they forget about any ambitions that they have, and they wake up every single morning just chasing that high. And develop extreme paranoia, another reason Officer Basso has to be ready for anything. Watch what happens as we show up and try to talk to a few of them. Hey, Jennifer. Yes. Hey, listen, I got the news with me. They're doing a story on addiction. Do you want to talk to them? I don't want to talk. Come on, why is that the you kidding? How do you know my name like that, bro? That's scary, bro. And we were shocked to learn the extreme some of these addicts go to, to hide their habits. I've seen heroin hidden in the worst kind of places you can imagine. I found heroin hidden in, in, a, uh, in, a, in an infant's diaper on the infant, Dexa heroin. There's nothing off limits in Peekskill. school. As we saw firsthand. This is the parking lot of the AMP shopping center. Like I said, this is a uh, one of our known drug locations. We're always getting arrested out of here. I wouldn't expect when I go grocery shopping to see my local heroin dealer out in the parking lot. Yeah, well, now that you know, be mindful of it. Public parking lots are commonly used. Used to buy drugs, used to use drugs. And not just at your corner grocery store. So we're riding along Grant Avenue now? Yes. Looks like a pretty quiet residential area. But within this quiet block, Peekskill police last month made their largest heroin bust in city history. We seized $1.2 million worth of 100% pure heroin. And in case you're wondering, this is what a million dollars of heroin looks like. That will eventually be broken up, what's called stepped on, and it'll be packaged up into smaller increments that you see here. If you snorted that amount, you would, you would probably die. From quiet blocks to deli counters. These criminals are trying to, they, they constantly change and adapt their tactics to what we do. So it's a, it's a constant cat and mouse game. But there's one place, I promise you, you will not believe heroin is being sold. And there is a huge problem with drugs in that old people home. They're letting their grandkids, their grandkids are coming in and setting up shop and dealing out of their grandparents' house. You heard right, an old age home. After a while, you know, if they can't get the drugs, you don't know what they're going to do. My son wants me to move. He wants me out of here. Really feel bad for the old people. In your golden years, you want to rest. You want to not have to worry about those kind of things. New information in a heroin investigation at a Sullivan County Elementary School. At least two young men have died 
of heroin overdoses. Meantime, police in Carmel are issuing a warning after four heroin overdoses in just the last two weeks. And addicts never really know what they're buying. In Newburgh last December, a batch of heroin sold in these unstamped bags was laced with the powerful cancer drug fentanyl. Within just three days, three people were dead and dozens more overdosed. You'll see kids, I mean, they're throwing up out of their mouths, foaming out of their mouths. They got the needles. You get the needle sticking out of their arm. But there's only so much a local cop like Officer Basso can do. That's why New York senior Senator Chuck Schumer is pushing for federal action. There have been too many tragedies surrounding prescription drugs and subsequent heroin use in the lower Hudson Valley. And it's time to do more. Senator Schumer is calling for the Hudson Valley to be designated as a high-density drug trafficking area, which would allow local officials to receive more federal resources to battle the heroin epidemic. In the meantime, Peak Skills Police years, Chief is putting heroin dealers on notice. Dealers, get lost. If you don't, we're going to find you. We're going to lock you up. You're not going to get away with it. We'll fight the fight on every front. We'll educate. We'll, we'll, uh, we'll enforce. And, you know, ultimately we'll prevent. A fight with no clear front lines and danger around every corner. And we want to give a very special thank you to the Peekskill Police Department for allowing us inside their world. We hope this report and the others we told this week will serve as an urgent wake-up call. Children are dying. Families are being destroyed. Communities torn apart. Victor and Doreen Siapa never guessed that their daughter was hooked on heroin. Almost two years after Natalie's death, her parents say too many kids are blind to the dangers. This is not like drinking a six-pack of Budweiser on a Friday night. If you snort one line of this, you're going to be a slave to it. Natalie's overdose was not an isolated case. When Nassau County police started tracking heroin-related deaths, they found that a drug long popular in urban communities had caught on with teens in suburbia. In the last year alone, Nassau County police made almost 400 arrests related to heroin. With arrest numbers still high this year, the police are now starting new initiatives to get parents to become more aware. We notice a, a nexus between uh, people buying it here in Nassau County and perhaps purchasing it in, uh, say, Brooklyn. A packet of heroin can cost as little as $5, and while injecting it might have scared some users in the past, today's teens seem to think that snorting and sniffing are less harmful, even though those methods are also addictive. The morning Natalie failed to return from a party, Doreen phoned her daughter's friends. One call led to a house in Seaford where the mother found her daughter motionless. And I said she's obviously not sleeping. You could tell. She looked like somebody had just tossed her on the couch and um, I yelled, you know, call 911. The Siapas say their loss should awaken others that heroin is not only a problem in the city. We just thought it was a drug that every now and then you hear of somebody famous dying from it. We just didn't know it was here. Chow Dang, Columbia News Tonight. Here we begin a series of reports across all platforms of NBC News examining the urgent and growing heroin problem in our country. The numbers are staggering. Over just a five-year period, heroin abuse has nearly doubled in America. Tonight we're going to begin our reporting in New England because it's a snapshot of what's unfolding in communities across the country. It's so bad in parts of Vermont that this year that state's governor devoted his entire state of the state to this one topic, the epidemic, calling it a full-blown heroin crisis. We get our report tonight from national correspondent Kate Snow. Look past the lighthouses and covered bridges. As we drove through, we found another New England, where a bucket of used heroin needles at a needle exchange one afternoon measures the scale of the problem in Portland, Maine. When did you start filling that bucket? This bucket was changed this morning, so all this of those morning. needles are just from today. Yep. Parents support each other in Salem, Massachusetts. We found some needles in our room and it was just, it blew us away. And the Walmart parking lot in quiet Rutland, Vermont, is known as the place where 20 bucks buys a ticket, local slang for a small baggie of heroin. The number of people dying from a heroin overdose in Vermont more than doubled in just one year. 
all over the state, there are waiting lists to get into treatment clinics like Green Mountain Family Medicine. It's hard. I mean, the, the downhill spiral, it was so fast that I didn't know what I was doing. How many do I have on my list? Dr. Dean McKenzie says heroin has a grip on this town. After a while, you're not doing it to get high. You're doing it to survive. You're doing it so you don't get sick. His wife, Dr. Cheryl McKenzie, is in the same field, a psychologist. They live in a beautiful home in the mountains with their young kids. Their older son, Ryan, took us on a tour of Rutland. There's a couple dealers on this road right here. Um, on this road where the kids are riding their bikes? Yep, on the road where the kids are riding their bikes, actually. How do you know that? Because I've bought from there before. From these That's houses. right. The son of parents who dedicated their lives to fighting substance abuse was secretly hooked on heroin while living in their home. The boy who'd been a bookworm, a bright student joining the Model UN in high school, started using prescription painkillers and got addicted to those. But pills have become harder to come by in Vermont. My dealer couldn't get them anymore, so I couldn't get them. And then as I couldn't get them, heroin started to move in. She suggested she, heroin. Yeah, she suggested heroin and it moved on from there. When Ryan confessed he was addicted, Cheryl went through his room. Found um, needles and spoons. I was always wondering where my spoons were going. And I really thought that maybe, maybe the kids were throwing them out with their plates. No, that's not where the spoons were going. Your doctors uh -huh. were parents. It's very easy to try to put on your doctor hat. We're parents. We're just like any other parent who's dealing with someone with an addiction. Ryan tells us he's been clean for a year as of last weekend. You love your son, clearly. I adore my son. I absolutely adore my son. She loves this state, too, and is working with others across the Rutland community to change what's happening here. Every time we go to a meeting, it gets bigger and bigger. And that's what we need to see happen. People who have addictions to come forward, ask for help, don't be embarrassed. We heard so many times the reason heroin abuse is so rampant right now is because people who started abusing prescription painkillers found heroin as a cheaper alternative. For families dealing with this addiction, there are resources on our website, NBCNews.com, and you can share how heroin has touched your life using hashtag heroin in America. And Brian, tomorrow we'll focus on a miracle remedy for an overdose, but it is not legal everywhere yet. So we meet a mother, she's so desperate for this drug that she's willing to break the law, Brian, in order to potentially save her sons. And that's the thing about this powerful reporting this week. It's the people we meet along the way who all remind us of someone. Kate Snow, thanks. We'll see you right back here tomorrow night. All this week here, we've been reporting on the heroin epidemic in parts of this country. And at the heart of all of this are the families that are battling to help their loved ones overcome their addictions and overcome overdoses. We've heard from a lot of families including one mother outside Boston who reached out to our national correspondent, Kate Snow, who joins us here in the studio tonight. Kate. Brian, so many people, so many messages start, my son, my brother, my daughter, and late Monday, one about a young man who'd overdosed and re was revived with a drug called Narcan in a suburb of Boston, his mom wrote. Son was almost taken in ICU tonight after three doses Narcan. Thank God paramedics had it. Well, we found her. The Gordonstein family has been to hell and back this week. Danny is the second oldest of six kids. Last week, he overdosed on heroin. And this Monday morning, he signed himself up for outpatient rehab, but then wanted one last high. Mom Debbie says most of the family was home when Danny's older brother found him slumped over in his room. I just kept yelling, is he alive? And they kept saying yes. Her daughter, Samantha, was trying to shield her nine-year-old sister from seeing her big brother like this. And I saw my dad holding him, and that's when she looked at me and just said, is he going to live? And she just broke down crying. Danny's disease is affecting everyone in this family, says his father, David. You don't sleep. Uh, I, I watch my teenagers, you know, stress out about it. It's hard to try to explain to a nine-year-old what drug abuse is. In the corner of her son's hospital room, Debbie was calling residential rehab facilities. It was the second time in a week that he's overdosed. It's a struggle many families face. There's no guidebook for rehab centers, and insurance doesn't often cover lengthy residential treatment. You have to be on the phone. It's a full-time job. I have six kids. 
Managing an addiction is a full-time job. She can't wait for a bed to open in a state-run facility, so she's found a spot at a private rehab in Tennessee. Family members are loaning them the $20,000 for a 30-day stay. I'm just praying that it works, that it really works. Looking through photos yesterday, Debbie came across a birthday three. card Danny wrote in. You value time with me and everyone else in the family. Telling his mom how much she means to him. I haven't read it in a long time. I needed to hear that today from him. And I know he's going to say it again. Tonight, Danny is on his way to Tennessee to start treatment. I'm not ashamed of my son. I'm proud of my son. And I love him with every fiber of my being. And there is nothing I won't do to make sure that I give him every shot at recovery. The drug that saved Danny on Monday is Narcan. An update on our story from last week about that. The governor of Maine had told us he opposed allowing parents to have Narcan, but this week he changed course. He now supports making it available to immediate family members under certain conditions, Brian. Opening a lot of eyes with your work here. Kate Snow with us as part of this series. Kate, thanks. A shocking number out today from the government. A person dies in this country every 36 minutes from an opioid drug overdose, either prescription painkillers or heroin. And the FDA says accidental drug poisoning has now surpassed car accidents as the leading cause of accidental death in this country. There is a drug that can reverse an overdose and stop people from dying. Some emergency responders have been using it. Today, the feds took a major step in making sure that drug is even more widely available. We get our report tonight from our national correspondent, Kate Snow. In Portland, Maine, we rode along with paramedics who routinely use a drug called naloxone to bring someone back from an overdose. It's an amazing medication. You know, they can be unconscious, not breathing, and they wake right up. Nationwide, the drug has saved more than 10,000 people. And today, the FDA approved a new version that can be prescribed to families and friends of someone who might overdose on heroin or opioid painkillers. This approval today will enable care, emergency care, life-saving care, to be given on the spot when it's needed, whether you're in a clinic or a hospital or on the street. The new device called Evzio, which will be available this summer, talks you through a quick injection through clothing. Injection complete. Seek emergency medical attention. The FDA today compared it to having a defibrillator around in case someone has a heart attack or an EpiPen for allergic reactions. Until now, access to naloxone has depended on where you live. Twist it in. Outside Boston, they train dozens of parents each week to use a nasal spray version of the drug. Parents like Jack Riley. Why would you not provide a resource that could allow a parent or a loved one to save the person. But in other places, it's illegal for parents to have. Maine's governor, Paul LePage, has opposed legislation to widen distribution in his do state. You, do you believe that it should be distributed to parents, for example, no. who have a child? Why not? Because it's an escape. It's an excuse to stay addicted. I think we need to treat, let's deal with the treatment. The proper treatment and not saying go overdose and oh by the way if you do I'll be there to save you but with all due respect governor if it can save one life why would you not support I've, that I've said my piece on it. the FDA commissioner says there's no scientific evidence to show that people abuse heroin or painkillers more when they know that there's naloxone around there are so many families so desperate for this drug they're getting it from the underground right now we're going to meet some of them next week in a special series across all of NBC News Brian about the heroin epidemic here in America. We'll look forward to that. An important topic. Kate Snow, thank you very much. All this week, we have been airing a series of reports designed to shed light on this country's growing heroin epidemic and the lives that are being destroyed along the way. Tonight, we want to show you a program that's working to help addicts turn their lives around. Here again tonight, our national correspondent, Kate Snow. Good afternoon, sir. Thank you very much. In rural oh, Putnam afternoon. County, Please New York, Judge James Reitz is forcing addicts to get clean. How many meetings a week do you go? Through a combination of compassion. Please make good decisions. We're here to help you out if you need that. And consequences. You probably came into this program trying to avoid state prison. Yeah, five years. Judge Reitz gave us rare access to his drug court using defendants' first names only. He says heroin now accounts for nearly 60% of his caseload. How many times did I put you in jail? 
maybe four or five. Right. How are you, sir? It's one of more than 2,800 Everything drug okay? courts in all 50 states. Addicts who've committed crimes now, can avoid so going to jail to if they successfully complete anything? a two-year treatment program. There has been resistance. There are those who think punishment is the answer. Why wouldn't you want to give somebody a fighting chance to stay clean and sober, stay alive, stay out of jail, and become a productive member of society? Everything's okay? Edward went from a straight-A student to an addict and a thief. I stole my brother's identity. I took any piece of jewelry that we had in the house. His own parents pressed charges, and he ended up in Judge Reitz's courtroom. He's been clean for six months. I had I not come into this program, I'd be dead right now. I've seen old people, lawyers, doctors, teachers that have lost their licenses because of the drugs. One of those teachers was Michelle. You were teaching while high on heroin? Yes. Using in the bathroom? Teacher bathroom. So irrational that I didn't even think twice if a teacher would walk in. That was how irrational my thinking was. Were you shooting it into your veins? Into my neck. When she failed to comply with court-ordered treatment, Judge Reitz sent her to jail. That was her wake-up. She's been clean for more than four years. Treatment court motivated me to continue to do the right thing. Now she's part of the judge's team, and that's not all. It's possible to come out the other side. Michelle met her husband Brandon in drug court. With this ring. When they married last summer, Judge Reitz presided. Michelle, do you take Brandon to be your wedded husband? I do. To see the end result right now today, Michelle, it proves that if we work together as a team in a community, we can change people's lives one day at a time and make a difference. Nationwide, the number of drug courts has doubled in the last decade. Studies have shown that they save taxpayer money because treatment is far less expensive, Brian, than keeping someone in jail. Response has been overwhelming. I know you'll stay on this topic for us. Kate Snow back with us tonight. Thanks. More now in our series this week on the heroin epidemic in this country. Tonight, a closer look at how to reverse an overdose using a drug that can bring people back from the dead. It's known by the brand name Narcan. A lot of paramedics and first aid squads carry it. It has already saved thousands of Americans. And while the FDA just last week approved a new form available by prescription this summer, right now in a lot of places it remains illegal for anyone outside the medical profession, leading some families of addicts to take extreme measures. Here again is our national correspondent, Kate Snow. Outside St. Louis, this mom is so desperate so to protect her family, she's willing to break the law. Technically, this is illegal for you to have yes. in the state of Missouri. Yes, it is. Denise, who asked us not to use her last no. name, keeps those vials filled with Narcan on her dresser, injected into a muscle, and it can instantly reverse an overdose. If they're laying on the floor dead, I'm going to save their life before an ambulance could get here and save their life. They are her sons, Ben and Ryan, both of them living with her, both of them heroin addicts, sleeping in the rooms they grew up in. Denise has sent them to rehab, but they relapsed. Ben is in treatment because he's young enough to be covered by his dad's insurance. He's been clean for two months. But Ryan can't afford treatment and is still struggling. For some of us, we have no idea what the attraction is. What does it feel like? Oh, like a warmth, you know what I'm saying? Like everything's all right. That's what it feels like. You don't think about anything, it's just calming. It's so easy to get addicted and so easy to overdose. That's what scares Denise. Ryan said he's lost five friends. Yeah, good friends. And you probably knew their moms. Mm -hmm. I can't even drive by their houses because I know my kid could be next. They've had close calls before. A couple of years ago, Denise had to take Ryan to the hospital after he overdosed. They gave him a shot in Narcan. And I've never seen anything like it in my life. She was pushing it in his IV and he was coming out of it. The Narcan. Before she even finished putting it in. And that is what led her to Chad Sabora, her source for Narcan. We're trying to get this in the hands of addicts and their loved ones. A recovering addict himself, he gives it out for free to anyone who asks. You don't give this to them, they're going to die. But critics say that gives users like Ryan a false sense of security. Some people's argument is that if you have more Narcan around, heroin addicts will use more because they'll, real, they'll know that they have like a safety net. Well, that's ridiculous. Is that really what people think? Wow. <laughs> you use if you want to use, you know. It's not, I don't think, oh wait, I got Narcan in the house, I can go use. How's it going? Good, good, good. A few hours after our interview with Ryan, mom and sons meet up at Chad's apartment. 
Ryan says he's been drinking with friends, but as they watch Chad explain how to use Narcan, it becomes clear that he is high. You been using? No, I didn't use heroin. Just drinking? Yeah. I did take a Xanax too. Denise and Chad don't believe him. They think he's on heroin. Are you more worried about him than yes. you were this morning? Yes. Yes. He knows we're doing this. He goes, he gets high. That's why you're here, though, right? Right. Denise never thought she'd raise two heroin addicts or break the law to save them, but she says she has no choice. I mean, your kids are everything to you. And my goal every day is to keep them alive. <laughs> and so far, I've succeeded. Their story is so painful, and in many ways, it's representative of the barriers a lot of families face when it comes to insurance coverage and treatment. We have more on that angle on our website. We have had so much response, Brian, using the hashtag heroin in America. This is such powerful stuff, and thank you for being here to tell their stories. Kate Snow with us again tonight. We're back now at 743 with an NBC News special series, Hooked, America's Heroin Epidemic. We have unfortunately found ourselves talking a lot lately about heroin abuse, the deaths of well-known actors Corey Monty, Philip Seymour Hoffman, just the latest to make headlines. But this is a problem that's gripping the entire nation and all walks of life. NBC national correspondent Kate Snow spent several months finding those people, and they're courageous. They're willing right. to unveil their battle with addiction. Hey, Kate. Bravely, good morning, bravely telling their stories. Savannah, heroin use nearly doubled in the U.S. between 2007 and 2012. And if you're imagining the stereotype of a junkie living under an overpass, think again. You're about to meet Michelle, who asked us only to use her first name. Her story proves heroin addiction does not discriminate. I'm a great mom. I'm a teacher. I'm a daughter, a, a niece, I'm all of these great things. And then I am a heroin addict showing up at a 4th of July party with track marks. For years, Michelle lived a double life in picturesque Putnam County outside New York City. Her story defies the stereotype of a heroin addict. I come from a good family, very tight. I mean, a great neighborhood in the suburbs. She had always wanted to be a teacher. I love being with kids, period. I mean, I could be with kids all day. The only thing Michelle loved more was being a mom to her daughter. This is her third birthday here. She was everything. She is everything to me. But after an unhappy first marriage, she started drinking heavily and then turned to prescription painkillers. When the money ran out, she switched to a cheaper fix, heroin. What does it feel like? It felt like that I couldn't feel hurt anymore. Numb, energized. So you I, were teaching while high on heroin? Yes. Using in the bathroom? Yes, I did that. The teacher bathroom? The teacher bathroom. So irrational that I didn't even think twice if a teacher would walk in. That was how irrational my thinking was. Were you shooting it into your veins? Into my neck. Eventually, Michelle lost everything, her teaching license and custody of her daughter. When she came for visits, Michelle would retreat to the bathroom to shoot up. My mother would knock on the door. She'd look at me and she'd be like, disgusted. And you know, kids are smart. Even at nine years old, you know, they know that there's something wrong. And she's afraid. I feel like a terrible mother, but I can't stop because I'm not done. Physically dependent on heroin, if she didn't get high, she'd be sick. After a third DUI, facing felony charges and four years in jail, she was sent to this man. Good afternoon, sir. Thank you very much. Judge James Reitz oversees one of the 2,700 treatment courts in the U.S. I've seen old people, lawyers, doctors, teachers that have lost their licenses. Defendants agree to a two-year treatment program. Here. If they fail, they go to jail. You face several years, I think 27, yes. if, you don't, if you're not successful, correct? How are you, sir? He gave our cameras Everything rare okay? access. Uh, We've had some tough times, haven't we? Yes. We do when he started eight honest. years ago, Absolutely. he rarely it's saw just, heroin addiction. Just... Now that's nearly 60% of his caseload. Young people in court told us heroin has become the cool drug in the local schools. It's cheaper and more accessible than a six-pack. Had I not come into this program, I'd be dead right now. 
treatment court motivated me to continue to do the right thing. Michelle is back in that same courtroom these days, now part of the judge's treatment court team. Over four years sober, she's working toward a certification to counsel people with addiction. And it's possible to come out the other side. It is. Yeah. It's possible to come out the other side. Brandon and Michelle met in treatment court and married last summer. With this ring. It was a beautiful ceremony with a familiar face presiding. Michelle, do you take Brandon to be your wedded husband? I do. Michelle's daughter was her bridesmaid standing at her side. You're not going to be a teacher anymore. No. But you sort of are. You're going to be teaching other people how to follow the path that you've taken. Exactly. Yes. Michelle agreed to do this interview with us because she wanted to show not only the dark side of heroin, but that there is hope to overcome it. Every addict we've talked with says you, you don't ever use the needle on yourself the first time. Someone usually injects you. You get this amazing high at first, but this highly addictive drug takes over so quickly. And as we know, so many of these stories don't have a happy ending. It can be a lifelong battle addiction. But again, Michelle doing so well now and, and bravely sharing that story so that others can learn. We also have more resources is on our website if you're looking for help, if you need that kind of a hotline or resource. It's, it's such an astounding today. series. You had an expert in your piece last night on Nightly who said it, it, there becomes a time when they're not even shooting up to get high. It's just to survive. That's what Michelle said. I would be sick if I didn't, if I didn't take more heroin or more drugs. And so you sort of sustain yourself that way and you don't know how to get out. Well, this is a real issue facing our country. And Kate, you're taking a deep dive. I want to remind everybody, you can see more of Hooked, America's heroin epidemic, all this week, all across the platform of NBC News. And if you want to join this conversation online, use the hashtag heroin in America.